The 40-year-old version is a 2005 American romantic comedy film directed by Judd Apatow, who produced the film with Clayton Townsend and Shauna Robertson. It features Steve Carell as the titular 40-year-old virgin Andy, an employee at an electronics store. Paul Rudd, Romany Malko and Seth Rogen play co-workers who resolve to help him lose his virginity and Catherine Keener stars as Andy's love interest, Triss. Watching Carell's performance in Anchorman The Legend of Ron Burgundy in 2004 inspired Apatow to cast him in the lead role for the film and they wrote The 40 Old Virgin together. It was based on the sketch Carol created with The Second City, the comedy troupe, where a man aged 40 hides a secret. Filming took place in Los Angeles and San Fernando Valley in California from January to April 2005. The film was released theatrically in the United States on August 19, 2005 through Universal Pictures and grossed $177 million worldwide on a $26 million budget. Reviews were generally favourable, praising Carell's performance and the film's well-meaning yet bawdy humour, which was also a point of contention by some conservative commentators as well. He won accolades for the Golden Schmoes Award and the MTV Movie and TV Awards for this role, while Keener received awards for the Boston Society of Film Critics and Los Angeles Film Critics Association. The 40-year-old version was named by the American Film Institute as one of 2005's top 10 films. The cast includes Steve Carell as Andy Slitzer, a shy and introverted man who quit trying to have sex following missed opportunities before meeting Trish. Judd Apatow stated that Andy Slitzer didn't have to be that weird. He said, Everybody has some built-in performance anxiety, and for some people it prevents them from taking risks and they simply stop trying. He added that people would always root for that person to prevail and find love. Catherine Keener as Trish Pedamont, the owner of the store that sells items on eBay. She has three daughters and one granddaughter prior to meeting Andy and starting a relationship with him. Keener was eager to take on the role as a change from her previous strong dramatic performances that leave it with wry comedy. Paul Rudd as David, a lovelorn, self-destructive character that Apatow and Carell specifically wrote with Rudd in mind to portray him. Romany Malka as Jay, a womanizer who Malka called probably the biggest freak of the film because he constantly runs around sleeping with all these women without ever making a real quality connection with anyone. Seth Rogen as Cal, one of Andy's co-workers who was written with Rogen in mind. Scott Chitwood deemed him the most adventurous of the group. Elizabeth Banks as Beth, a sexually uninhibited bookstore clerk who becomes intrigued with Andy. Banks said she had some outrageous moments and I realized I had to prove them early on in the audition process that I was willing to go that far once filming began. And Jane Lynch as Paula, the boss of David, Jay, Cal and Andy, who offers to take the latter most virginity after learning he has never had sex. A young Kevin Hart and Jonah Hill also make cameos in the film. Some interesting trivia notes for the film. The scene where Andy has his chest hair removed required five cameras set up for the shot. Steve Carell's chest hair was actually ripped out in the scene. Carell had told director Judd Apatow just before shooting the scene, it had to be real. It won't be as funny if it's mocked up or if it's a special effect. You have to see this, that this really is happening. For obvious reasons, the scene had to be done in one shot. Actor Malko began to feel sick while watching the waxing and ran away from set. According to Mickey Mia, it took three to four hours to shoot the scene and she requested that some of the chest hair be trimmed in advance to reduce Carell's pain. Mia noted that only a tiny bit was removed so that it would look great on the camera. His chef was nobly fully back string filming and he shaved off the hair after three weeks. After Carol blurted out Kelly Clarkson's name during the wax, Clarkson told Rogan in 2021 that it would be literally one of the things people knew her from, regardless of anything else she ever did. Also during the waxing scene, the actress playing the waxer almost ripped Steve Carell's nipple off. She hadn't realized you were supposed to coat the nipples in Vaseline prior to waxing. Fortunately for the actor, director Jade Apatow realized what was happening and yelled cut just in time. According to Seth Rogen, Steve Carell was so nervous that the film would be shut down by the studio that he had the writers prepare a backup version of the script that didn't contain a single word of profanity. The film ended up being instrumental in making the US version of The Office in 2005 into an Emmy-winning smash hit. After the show's first season, the producers were worried because Steve Carell's Michael Scott character was coming across as nasty and menacing when they didn't want him to. After seeing his performance here, though, they used some of his elements to transform Michael Scott into a man who was still a buffoon, but was more clueless than mean and had some genuine skills. During the time of filming, Steve Carell was 43 years old and had been married for 10 years and was already a father of two children when the movie was released. A large portion of the dialogue in the movie was improvised. Keener stated in a 2010 interview that Apatow never really would ever say cut and instead would say reload when burning through the film due to improvisation, calling the experience hysterically funny. She also mentioned he had to kind of lose sense of being self-conscious on that movie because it was sort of an all-in in terms of throwing a joke out or even the writer would sit behind the monitors and behind the curtain. The production used over a million feet of film, a milestone reached on the last day of filming and celebrated with free champagne from Technicolor SA. 
Reduction was halted by Universal Pictures after the first week due to concerns that the physical appearance of Carol's character resembled that of a serial killer and that the early footage was not funny. Paul Rudd was also criticised for being overweight and the studio was unhappy with how Apatow treated the project like an independent film. Several test screenings were held for the film prior to entering theatres, which each costing approximately $10,000. It was initially considered uncomfortably dirty and not funny at all, before Apatow reduced the amount of pornography shown. Malko once pleaded with him to cut his scenes, fearing what would happen following its release and insisting, My mom is an ordained minister, bro. Cut me out of the movie, please. I'm serious. This request was declined because Apatow found Malko funny. He was surprised to find out his mother ended up taking all of her church friends to see it multiple times and stating that the 40-year-old virgin changed my career by leading me to more subsequent job offers without prior auditions. Now this is one of those comedies that stands the test of time. Steve Carell of course has become such a famous comedian actor now, but back then he was really not known at all. For me he is one of the most talented and versatile comedians going around and it was about time that he got a movie where he could be the lead. In this movie he really proves he's got the comedic chops to carry a movie and provide a good share of fun filled laughs. This movie is actually quite sweet in so many ways and the more you think about it the better this film actually gets. Instead of creating a character that is just stupid, Crowell creates a character with a lot of complexity and sophistication and an affectionate characterization and he plays him as a credible human being, a man who just hasn't come across the right time or the right place or the right person to now have sex with. For me this is almost a sweet spirited sex comedy and the whole question is what's wrong with actually being a virgin? Absolutely nothing and that's sort of the point of this movie. For me like I said Carol's performance is endearing, he's naive but he's likeable. There's nothing inherently wrong with him, he's just shy and hasn't really taken up the opportunity. The film uses raunchy but realistically funny comedy to connect with its adult audience and the whole time you are really are rooting here for the underdog. For me this was a groundbreaking comedy and of course put Judd Apatow on the map. It's one of those films that breaks away from the usual comedy tropes, instead moving from a stupid to intellectual, from crass to sensitive, from over masculinity to hilariously honest and open comedy. And it's one of those films that launched the bromance within comedy films. This movie really fittingly launched Steve Carell's career and pushed him on to the next level as it were, as well as it did for Judd Apatow. In fact, if you look at, for example, Paul Rudd in this movie and Seth Rogen, who both perform their roles very well, it also launched their careers. So this movie in many ways is really groundbreaking in terms of what it did for the actors and director in this case. It's a nice, easy comedy with a likeable character with a heart of gold who eventually lands in a solid, committed relationship. And for me, this film almost acts as a sort of milestone in sexual awareness in cinema. It's a mature, sophisticated comedy written and played perfectly here by Steve Carell and directed perfectly by Jad Apatow with a great performance from all the cast. And it's one of those films you can watch time and time again and always enjoy. The 40-year-old virgin gets an 8.5 out of 10.